Hey guys and girls, and in today's video, I'm going to be dispelling the myth that Roblox's physics engine is slower than setting the parts C-frame manually. On the left side, we have a thousand red parts, and these parts are falling using Roblox's physics engine. On the right side, we have a thousand green parts, and inside of a heartbeat event, each part C-frame is being updated to fall down like the red parts. And if we look at the graph down here, we can see that the physics step being the purple line and the green line being the script which updates the parts using C-frame. And we can see that the performance difference is around 50%. So we can see physics step takes around four milliseconds while the script takes around eight milliseconds. And if we inspect the micro profiler, we can see that the physics step here took around 5.5 milliseconds, and over here took 4.5 milliseconds. And if we look at the C frame script, we can see it took 8.8 .8 milliseconds, and here it took 8.8 .8 milliseconds. So now let me show you the scripts that are running on this project. The first script we can look at is the camera script. This script simply sets the camera to scriptable and positions it 300 studs away so that we can see the parts falling. I have also deleted the base plate and the spawn part from the workspace. And I have also disabled character auto loads so that we have no other parts in the workspace other than the parts that are falling. I also have a physics script, which is this script on the left side, and a C-frame script, which is this script on the right side. Now let's compare the two scripts. On the C-frame script, we are getting the run service, but on the physics script, we are not getting the run service. We're then setting some variables, which is the exact same on both scripts. And then we're looping based on how many we have set amount to and we're creating parts which is also the exact same on both scripts. And on the C-frame script we have a function which we can ignore for now. And then we're creating a while true do loop and we have the same on this script but they're slightly different. So inside of the while true do loop we're first waiting one second on both scripts. We're then looping through every part on both scripts. And on this script, we're setting linear velocity to 0, 0, 0, and we're doing the exact same on this side. But the only difference is we're also setting anchored to false on the physics script. And once we've finished looping all parts and setting the properties, we're then on the C-frame script connecting the heartbeat event to the loop function which we're not doing on the physics script. We're then waiting one second on both scripts, and then we're disconnecting the loop on the heartbeat event, and then we're looping through every part again on both scripts, and we're setting anchored back to true, which we're not doing on the C-frame script, and then we're positioning the part back at a random position at the top, which is done on both scripts. If we now look at the loop function, we can see that this function is looping through every part and then using the part's linear velocity multiplied by delta time to update the C-frame's position. And then we're using gravity multiplied by delta time to update the linear velocity. So now let's test the script again, but I'm going to increase the amount from 1000 to 2000. I'm also going to add a task weight here so that they run one after the other so we can test them individually. So we now have 2000 parts on the left side and 2000 parts on the right side. And we can see on the graph that the physics based parts are around 50% faster than the parts that are being moved by C-frame. I have further increased the part count to be 3000 on the left side and 3000 on the right side and we can now see that my computer is struggling to complete the movement within one frame for the green parts. You may have noticed that I have set can touch, 
can query and can collide to false. And this is to give a fair comparison between physics and C-frame. Because even if we enable these options on the C-frame script, this script will not take collisions and touch events will not fire when updating the C-frame. So let's comment out can touch and can query on both scripts. And let's reduce the amount down to 2000 again. And let's see if we give a unfair advantage to C-frame if it can catch up to the physics engine. And here we can see that even with can touched turn on, the physics engine is still outperforming setting the C-frame manually. And to prove that the can touch only works for the physics engine and not when you set the C-frame, what I have done is created a part and I've created a new script called touch and I'm waiting for this part, connecting a touch event and simply printing the name of the part that touched this part. And another change I've made is I've set amount to 100 for both scripts and I have set the names of the parts. So the physics scripts creates parts called physics and the C-frame script creates parts called C-frame. And now we can see that when the red parts touch this part here, it prints to the output window. But when the C-frame parts touch this part over here, it does not print to the output window. Now let's give the C-frame script an even higher advantage by enabling can collide. So I'm going to comment out can collide on both scripts and I'm going to increase the amount to 1000 on both scripts. We can now see that with can collide set to true that the performance is almost identical and the physics based parts are colliding with one another and this part at the center while the C-frame parts do not collide and ignore the part in the center. Now let's test the network performance of physics-based parts versus setting the C-frame manually. So the first thing I'm going to do is move these two local scripts into replicated storage so that they do not run. And I've created two new scripts. These are not local scripts, these are normal scripts so they will be running on the server side and there is a physics and C-frame script and these are almost the same as the local scripts but slightly different. So the way these scripts work are they have the same variables at the top. They create the parts the exact same way as before. And we have the exact same uh, heartbeat event function. One difference is I've set the parts network owner to nil so that the server always calculates the physics of the part. And inside of the while true do loop, instead of anchoring and unanchoring the parts and waiting all the time, I'm simply allowing the part to fall for one second and then position it up at the top again and allowing it to fall again and again and again without any delays. And the same is true for the C-frame script. And now under view, I'm going to enable network so we can see the network stats. And let's first test the physics script. So I'm going to move this into server script service. And if we look at the network stats, we can see that the overall incoming data is around 40 kilobytes a second. And 3.9 of this is in data and 37 kilobytes is from the physics engine. And if we look at the outgoing network stats, we can see that the overall is 1.3 kilobytes a second. So I've added these numbers to Notepad so we don't forget them. So from the server to the client, we're sending on average 40 kilobytes a second. And from the client to the server, we're sending on average one kilobyte a second. So now let's test the C-frame script to see how much data this sends. So I'm going to move the physics script into server storage and the C-frame script into server script service. If we now look at the network stats for the C-frame script, we can see that the overall incoming kilobytes a second is 271. And we can see that no data is being sent from the physics engine and all the data is being sent from this data section. 
And if we now look at how much data is being sent from the client to the server, we can see that the overall kilobytes a second is 66. And we can see that this is all sent in the data section. So as we can see, the C-frame method is sending a lot more data over the network than the physics engine. And please remember that this is the data sent to just one client. So if you had 10 players on your game, you would have to multiply this value by 10. So this would have 400 kilobytes being sent from the server to all 10 clients, where this will have 2,710 kilobytes being sent to 10 clients. So now let's see what would happen if I increase the amount from 100 to 200. And let's first test the physics script. So I'm going to move C frame back into storage and the physics script into script service. So now we can see that the data on incoming has increased from 40 to around 50 and the outgoing has increased from one kilobyte to two kilobytes. You may have noticed that the parts are now moving weirdly. So parts that are close to the camera are updating more frequently, while parts that are further away from the camera are updating less frequently. And this is done intentionally by Roblox to reduce the kilobytes a second that needs to be sent from the server to the client. So this is a protection method to protect you from flooding your network with too much data. And if we now test the C-frame method, we can see that this does not have a protection method to protect you from flooding the data. And we can now see that the kilobytes a second has greatly increased to 542 kilobytes and the outgoing is increased to 130 kilobytes. So if we look at our notepad, we can see that with 100 parts, on the C-frame method, we will send in 271. And if we double the amount of parts, the kilobytes has also doubled from 271 to 542. But if we look at the physics engine, we can see that the kilobytes was not doubled from 40 to 80, but only increased by 10 kilobytes up to 50 kilobytes a second. So you can see that Roblox's optimizations of only sending data that is closer to the camera is working great in reducing the amount of data that needs to be sent over the network. Now you may be wondering, why not just send 500 kilobytes a second? And look how smooth the parts are moving. Now we have to remember that Studio Server runs locally on my computer. So the data being sent is not being sent over the network, but it's being sent from my computer to my computer. And if we look at YouTube's recommended upload encoding settings, and we look at 720p, we can see that the recommended bit rate is five megabits per second. And if we convert five megabits to megabytes, we can see that it comes to a value of 625 kilobytes. So we can see that with 200 parts, we're almost at the same amount of data that is required to send 720p video over the network. So hopefully in this video, I've been able to prove that using Roblox's physics engine is vastly superior to setting the C-frame manually. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below.